Hello, it's Nick from The Run Testers, and this is our review of the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. So the Velocity Nitro uh, original was one of our favorite shoes of last year. I loved it in particular. It was established in my rotation as kind of the best kind of cushioned option. Uh, and it's kind of the daily trainer in Puma's Nitro range. It's got a bit more cushioning than things like the DV8 Nitro. It's great value, basically. It's 100 pounds in the UK or 120 dollars in the US. And for that price, you're getting like a versatile cushioned training shoe. New version has the same drop as the original. It's a 10 millimeter drop from heel to toe with a heel stack height of 33 and a half millimeters and a forefoot stack of 23 and a half millimeters. It's very slightly lighter than the previous version in my size. So in a UK nine, this weighs 271 grams, uh, which is 9.55 ounces. Uh, it was 280 grams in the uh, original shoe. So you've lost a little bit of weight there and that's largely because they've reconfigured the midsole so you've still got two layers of foam here. You've got Puma's Nitro Foam on top, which is a nitrogen infused foam. And then you've got a layer of EVA underneath, which is you know, kind of traditional foam. That's in there to provide a little bit of stability because this Nitro Foam is fairly soft and squishy and bouncy. And you, what Puma has done is basically they've added more of that foam into the midsole, especially around the heel. So you're getting more Nitro Foam at the heel and you've also lost a plastic clip that ran around the back of the original here. And that creates a softer landing for heel strikers, um, but loses a little bit of stability at the back of the shoe. The outsole is a mesh. It feels a little bit kind of thicker and there's more padding maybe around the heel than the original shoe. Even the laces seem to have got more plush and spongy and it adds up to a very kind of cushioned feel but it can run slightly warm as a result. And then on the outsole you've got the excellent Puma grip. Uh, it's got a new outsole configuration to try and smooth transitions from midfoot to forefoot in particular but you've still got a lot of rubber there. You know a nice thick layer considering this isn't the heaviest shoe in the world. Uh, it's durable, grips fantastically well. You can almost treat this as a road to trail shoe in my experience because the outsole is so good. Fit for me then, I ran in a UK and a half, which is my size. I think that's what I would go for. I'd say true to size, apart from one thing that I found they're a little bit long in the toe. There was like an, almost like a thumb and a half kind of extra length in the toe. When I first put them on, that was an odd sensation. And I had a feeling that the toe might curl up on runs. It didn't, it actually didn't affect the run at all. And I think for that reason, I would still go in an eight and a half. They actually, I think, are quite narrow in this section of the shoe as well, and I've got quite wide feet, so I don't think it would work if I went down half a size. I think it would be too much of a tight squeeze. So yeah, I'd be recommending going true to size in these. For me, the fit was true to size in the Velocity Nitro 2. It's very similar to the fit on the original, maybe a touch more hold around the kind of heel and midfoot, perhaps because there's a little bit more padding there, but oh yeah, I was very happy true to size. So my thoughts on the fit haven't really changed from the um, initial first run video that we did. It's a very comfortable shoe. All the things that I liked from the um, original Velocity Nitro were kind of here and they're very, you know, kind of, I think, good improvements here as well. I had a lot of space up front in the toe box, no kind of real pressing on the sides of my foot either. I think you get a nice amount of padding around the heel as well. The tongue is similar, so I think it sits quite nicely on the top of your foot. And now Puma's kind of changed these spongy laces, which I do think make them a more comfortable um, kind of upper and, a, you know, gives it a, a more comfortable fit overall as well. Now, I will say that a couple of people in the first video mentioned that the upper can feel a little bit hot um, to wear. I did a couple of treadmill runs in this as well, and that is something I did notice a little bit. It wasn't massively off-putting in terms of running, but it's, it's something I noticed. But overall, uh, my UK size A on my kind of relatively kind of narrow feet, this shoe worked really well for me. All the things that I would look for uh, in a good fit, um, I think the Velocity Nitro 2 pretty much delivers on. So uh, the changes to the Velocity Nitro 2 for me have improved the shoe. Um, I like the fact it's a softer ride. I am a neutral heel striker and the changes here basically create an even better ride than I had on the original. You've got really good soft foam at the back running through the shoe that creates a nice cushioned and bouncy feel that I found really versatile and works at kind of a range of paces. It's a little bit, the upper's not very structured and you lose a touch of stability at the back there. So that might be a concern for people who uh, look for kind of stable neutral shoes. But yeah, I love the changes made. It's, it improved the ride even further. Um, I, just, I just find it basically a very enjoyable shoe to run and that's the simplest way to put it. I keep a training diary and in each run I kind of give a smiley face rating just for how much I enjoyed it alongside kind of normal RPE ratings and just yeah the Velocity Nitro delivers big smiles on every kind of run. So you've got a really comfortable shoe here for easy efforts but it has got the pace for speed work. Uh, I took it out for a tough fartlek session running 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 minutes on with a minute off in between. A couple of days after a race I wasn't expecting too much just went out ran on feel and um, 
um, yeah, I've just found the pace came really naturally in the shoe. And crucially, I kind of got stronger as the session went on. Like I was running sub 320 per K pace for those reps, which is down towards kind of my half marathon towards 10K pace and just felt really comfortable even in a shoe that, you know, is built primarily for kind of easier runs. Uh, it really does a job on that kind of speed work. Like I'm not going to say it's going to go all out and smash a 5K PB or go down the track and nail a set of 400s, but it can do that job. And it really depends on, you know, how obsessive you are over those things, whether you'd accept it to do the job. Personally, I'm too obsessed. I'd pair this with a faster shoe and I'd want you know a light, lighter more speed focused shoe for that kind of stuff but yeah this has the versatility I think to be a decent all-rounder but most of the time obviously you can be running easy in it and it does a superb job of that as well so I've done a couple of easy runs and a progression run and the progression run really showed off the velocity nitro at its best running some easy miles in the forest enjoying the fantastic grip enjoying the really cushy soft feeling underfoot and then I went on to the road in the second half of the run and, you know, worked through the gears to speed up to kind of 340k pace, just kind of general steady pace. And it just, you could really feel the way the ride works with those different paces as that kind of softer, cushy feel at the start. And then you get that bit more bounce It's a very kind of smooth and, you know, reasonably quick transition. And it just doesn't really hold you back at those kind of steadier paces or even moving towards tempo or some, you know, some slower race paces. It's, it's kind of got it all, I think, uh, in a very pleasing package because it's cheap i think it looks good it's durable we've got a good outsole it's got so much going for it it just delivers on so many fronts and it's a shoe i absolutely love it's going to go straight in my rotation for the coming year so i have done just over 50k in this shoe and i have to say that you know every run i've done in this shoe has felt great um i've done some slower stuff uh kind of shorter quicker stuff i tried to do some kind of intervals in it i've done a couple of kind of longer runs in this shoe as well and it's hard for me to find any real complaints. I mean, I think in comparison to the original Velocity Nitro, it does feel differently to run in. It's not like an iterative update in terms of what you're getting here. And it's really kind of down to the fact you're getting more of that Nitro foam uh, in the midsole, which, you know, I think what is what made it special to run in the original. And, you know, it feels a lot nicer, um, I think, um, to run in now. You know, you still get that kind of little bit of bounce in there, I think, you know, a little bit of kind of softness, um, I think it's responsive. I think it, when you want to go quicker, it can feel snappy as well. Um, and yeah, it just felt very and a very enjoyable shoe to run in all of my sessions. Um, you lose that kind of um, plastic heel clip, which I think was in there to kind of offer a little bit more control and stability in terms of the shoe. I don't think particularly it's something that I felt that you lose in the shoe. I actually prefer that it's not there. Um, I think it almost makes it feel a little bit better at running kind of quicker paces in it. Um, in terms of the outsole, I mean, the, the Puma Grip outsole was kind of great on the original. I think the outsole, this Puma Grip outsole in general is really strong um, in terms of offering kind of really a good grip and traction. And um, there's a little bit more kind of going on at the back of the shoe just to kind of support maybe, you know, you kind of hitting back on your heel there. But ultimately, I think that's, you know, that's a really strong point for Puma shoes in general. And the fact that it's here on the Velocity Nitro 2 and hasn't really changed hugely in terms of what we've got on the original, I think is a really positive thing. So, yeah. For me in general, in terms of all the kind of runs that I did in this shoe, and again, I'd say it's a mixture of things. Um, it was, you know, a really comfortable shoe. I think the the, the additional kind of um, nitro frame you're getting in the midsole really makes it feel like a more enjoyable shoe to run in. Um, and I think it's, again, it's another shoe that's going to work for a lot of different sessions. Um, and it did uh, kind of in my um, run tests um, overall. Run test for me, I've done about 40 miles in this shoe on a mixture of tarmac, mainly roads actually, a little bit of compacted kind of park paths, so firm ground. I've done things that are kind of nice, long, slow plods, three hour long runs, low heart rate, like 130 beats per minute or lower. And that for me translates to about kind of nine minute miles or something even perhaps even slower. I've also done a faster half marathon race where I pushed that up to kind of seven to seven and a half minute miles, kind of on average a 139 half, just to see how this did. Again, that was on road. And I've done a few interval sessions as well as a few really, really, really easy recovery runs. And across all of that, I think this has been a fantastic shoe. I really like the first gen Velocity Nitro, and I think this one's actually an improvement on that. So they're incredibly comfortable from the moment you put them on. You've got these uppers that wrap the foot nicely without feeling, making it feel too constricted. There's just a, you know, it's quite well padded and cushioned in the heel, but I think just enough, it doesn't overdo it. So you don't feel kind of, some shoes, with, you know, it feels like your foot's too wrapped. This one, I think, strikes a nice balance of giving you that kind of plush comfort without feeling too heavy, too cumbersome. And that, yeah, I think that overall kind of balance, what you're getting here is a shoe that feels light and nimble and agile on the foot and super comfortable every time you slip into it. 
It's got that really great kind of disappearing feel on the foot. Now, I'm a runner that tends to like something a little bit firmer. So I would sort of like Socketty Ride 14, maybe a Rincon 3, those things that tend to come up a little bit more direct. And this is about as soft as I like to go in my shoes. But I think Puma has done some, something really remarkable here. They've kind of balanced that midsole, I think, right on the sweet spot where there is softness, there is protection, but it's not too much. It's not kind of, you're not really, really sinking and responding. You're getting a really good response but some really good protection without it being kind of over compressed that foam. And I really like that. It still kind of feels direct enough for me as a runner who likes to feel like I'm, I'm working across the ground, not entirely being kind of cushioned and, and removed from it. I like to feel connected. So in addition to them being nicely responsive, not too soft, not too squishy, I think what you're getting here is a shoe that's really versatile. I think this is a shoe, the kind of shoe that you could buy if you're training for a marathon, you could use it throughout all your training runs, through your long ones, your slow ones, your kind of faster interval sessions, and even racing it if you really wanted to. It's obviously not designed to be a marathon race shoe. If you're looking for a kind of niche sort of marginal gains race shoe, then there are better direct, you know, race shoes out there. But I think if you only wanted to buy one shoe, spend the money on them, this shoe could actually take you right through all of that. And I think that versatility is one of its biggest strengths. It coped really well with the half marathon that I raced. No problem over that distance. I've been in this shoe for three hour long plods as well. So in terms of stretching that sort of time on feet out, you know, no hot spots. It felt cushioned enough. I felt protected enough. I think it looked after my legs enough. So I, I would, I haven't run a marathon in it, but I think this shoe could step up to a marathon as well. I guess the final thing for me to say is that I, I quite like the fact that this has a silhouette, you know, a design that's a little bit more traditional. I do still like those kind of more traditional shoes. I think it offers pretty good stability. I think you've got really good grip on the unders as well. And, and all round, I think this shoe really is a very, very good solid shoe. So my verdict then, well, I've said a lot of it. This shoe is a winner for me. I think Puma have done really well with it. I, I think it's much better than the Nitro original. I really like that one, but I think this one is actually a step on. I think it's one of the best daily trainers that I've run in recently. And it's become one of those shoes that when I look down at a pile of shoes and I think, what should I put on today? Oh, I'm always tempted to put this one. So we've obviously got to test other shoes on, on the market at the moment for the run testers. But this is one it looks at me and screams, come on, just pop, pop me on and you can do anything you want in me. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic shoe. I think the other thing to talk about really is that price point. This is an absolute bargain of a versatile shoe. I think they've produced a real winner here and I would recommend this one to slot into anyone's rotation as a really good, solid, versatile, all-rounder daily trainer. So my verdict from the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 is that, you know, kind of ignore the price. You know, the fact it is as cheap as it is, it is just a standout daily trainer shoe for me. Um, one that's pretty much going to go, I think, straight into my rotation. Um, and I say that because, you know, it is, you know, it's it's a very nice shoe to go out and just run easy in, but you can, you know, pick up the pace in this and it works well at that, at that kind of quicker pace as well. Um, you've just got that nice kind of um, option to use it for a lot of different sessions. Now, in terms of the changes from the Original, I think they're all kind of big enough changes to warrant upgrading to this shoe. The only thing I would say that maybe people might be a little bit on the fence on, the upper is different. Um, it was a little bit warmer when I did those couple of treadmill runs with it. And ultimately, it's all positive. And I think, you know, the fact you're getting that more, uh, more of that kind of nitro foam in the midsole makes it a more enjoyable shoe to run in, particularly, I think, at the, the quicker stuff or slightly quicker stuff as well. Um, yes, at £100, it's hard to be if you look at what else is out there in terms of that are in the profile of this kind of daily trainer things like the night pegasus and um, 38 and 39 we'll have a video in the, the latest one soon um the Sockney ride 14 and 15 which we've just tested or started testing um and then i've been using the hocker mac 4 quite a lot as well the under armor velocity flow wind which is a very different shoe as well um in terms of how it sits there i think it very much sits well in that company um i think um it it's a, it offers a little bit more in terms of comfort to the um, the Sockenies, um upper. Um, I kind of prefer the midsole foam on this compared to the Nike a little bit. But I think, you know, the Nike's a strong, Pegasus is a strong shoe as well. Um, and the Under Armour is just, you know, a personal kind of, it's very different, unique shoe, but that kind of works really well for me in kind of being versatile in the kind of sessions I can use it for. So for me overall, I just think Vossi Nitro 2 is a standout shoe. It's one of the best shoes uh, I think have launched this year. I think if you're looking for a shoe that, you know, it's a do it all shoe that you can use for going short, going long, um, and you want something that's comfortable, um, you know, throughout that run as well, um, and offers, you know, really a really strong outsole to boot as well, then yeah, this is a shoe to definitely consider. Great value um, and one that's going to stick in my rotation um, as well.
So yeah, simple for me, the Lossy Nitro 2. It was my favorite like cushion shoe last year, and I think it's got better this year. So it's, in my opinion, the best cushion shoe going, um, just because it's versatile and comfortable and good value. And even if you take the value out of it, I'm still picking it ahead of shoes that cost you know, 140, 150 pounds with no problems. So one slight concern, if you live in a very hot country, it is a fairly warm, warmish upper, but that's never really bothered me but that will bother other people. The only other reason I think maybe to hesitate about it is if you're someone who does want a bit more stability from their cushion trainer, even if they want a neutral shoe, they want a touch more stability, then there are gonna be better options out there. Just simply shoes with firmer rides, something like the Reebok Flat Ride Energy 4, has got a slightly firmer ride. It's a very good value shoe as well at 75 pounds. Um, it's pretty comfortable, it's protective. It's not as cushy and bouncy as this, but it is still comfortable and it will be a touch more stable or the things like Nike's Infinity Run, which obviously has added stability elements and is a firmer ride that will work well as a stable neutral shoe or of course you can look at stability shoes but yeah if you are really worried about that side of things this is a like I say a fairly soft unstructured shoe up top and that might not be perfect for you otherwise um, I think it's a great shoe for loads of runners to consider it works very well in a rotation with a faster shoe or a racing shoe and if you are someone who just uses one shoe it's a really capable all-rounder but if you always say if you're using a one shoe rotation and are leaning towards the more performance end of things then it's still better to go for a faster option like the endorphin speed that's not as comfortable as this on um, easy days but will help you excel on like speed sessions and race day while still being decent for easy days this is more tilted the other way to be a very comfortable option that handles speed okay so yeah overall it's a big thumbs up to the updates to the losty nitro 2 fantastic all-round shoe nice looking now as well great option to take on holiday use for all your runs when you're out there and walk around i will have to clean the front of that if i'm going to do that but yeah great shoe great update so guys that's our review of the Puma Velocity Nitro 2. Please let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, please like, subscribe, ring the little bell so you get notified when videos are dropping. There are so many shoes coming out at the moment. It's, uh, it's actually a very stressful but very enjoyable time for us. So yeah, please do watch the videos. Let us know what you think and we'll see you next time.